Simon here. Solomon's Tales, hey, off again. So this is season two, episode two, I think. Solomon lands into Bangkok. He's got a year ahead of him. He's planning a year wandering around Asia. So he's landed, he's got a tourist visa, one month. His thoughts uh, at this point are the ex-girlfriend, and I've forgotten her name. What name did I give her? Was it Kay? Let's call her Kay, I can't remember. That a girl he broke up with. He thought, I'd like to see her and have it out with her. A bit of an argument. And, um, so he decides to head straight to Patea. Now, okay, he's got money in the bank. But it works out. He's got, let's say, a thousand dollars a month for one year to be able to survive a year. 250 bucks a week, that's not a lot. But again, the exchange rate back then was double what it is now. So that money today in 2017 would be $2,000 a month. So you could see, it's enough. But still had to go careful. Plus he had to pay for visas for the year, maybe some flights going between the countries. Um, and transport, taxes, motorcycle, rental. So it's not just a case of food, and then there's accommodation, which is a big chunk. Now, that 12, 11 and a half, 12 hour flight over is when he planned two month visa, one month visa, one month extension. So he thought two months in Patea, then probably go to Cambodia. So that's penciled in his mind. Lands, Bangkok, straight outside, um, up to the different level or down, I can't remember, uh, taxi. Um, now he had, to, he had to be a bit of a cheap Charlie. And the way of doing it at the airport, if you go to the taxi queue, there's a little bit of extra money added on for the taxi to pay for the airport guys. Um, and by going to the departure area where the taxis pull in to drop people off, if you get lucky, you can walk across, ask the taxi driver, Patea, and they do it a bit cheaper. That's what he did. And back then, I think it was about 800 bars. Um, down to Patea. Now his uh, flight was coming in early evening, well end of the afternoon. So taxi ride down to Patea and again back in that day you didn't have these the road system you have now so it took a couple of hours. He got in um, and he went to Soy 8 off Beach Road just inside on the right there's a couple of cheap hotels um, and just walked straight in off the street. The time of the year that he went was um, September. So it was just starting high season. So the prices start going up. But he got a hotel for that night for about 900 baht. He just got one night. He thought he was going to hit it hard to find a room the next day. Uh, maybe he'd need a second night. So he just said to them one or two nights and they gave him a room and he went straight to the room and crashed. Didn't even bother with food or anything. Just totally crashed out. The flight over now then worn him out. He'd eaten a bit on the plane and snacks here and there. So crashed in the hotel. Morning. First morning of the year. <laughs> what a great feeling he had. Sun was out. Lovely and warm, came out of the hotel, there was no breakfast at that hotel. And uh, he's in Soy 8, so he thought, I'll go up to Second Road, there's lots of cafes, restaurants around there for a breakfast. He walked up to Second Road, it's not far, is it a few hundred metres? And across the road, breakfast. Not the same as back home in the UK or wherever you're from, but 
it still can be quite a nice breakfast. But it's a bit of a challenge when you're in Thailand is you're hunting around to find the best cafe for your breakfasts. Who has the best sausage and bacon and eggs? <laughs> so we got a breakfast. Um, early morning, 9.30. So not a lot happening. Bars don't tend to start opening until about 10, 11. And he heads down, he thinks he's going to have a bit of a walk on the beach. First day. Climatise. Have a look again, he hasn't seen the beach for a while. And as he's walking along the beach, he's thinking, this is so much better than being sat in that taxi, working nights, depressed. Gorgeous sunshine, sea, beach, not that pretty a beach, but it's okay. Girls everywhere, foreigners everywhere, It's everyone starts to wake up. And he just thinks, this is why I love Patea and Thailand, it's just the hustle and bustle. Everything starts and it's busy, great weather. Oh, it's almost paradise. He has to find a room. He's going to be there for two months. How does he find a room? Now he can go start talking to girls from the bars. They all share rooms together. They know where the rooms are, the cheaper ones. What's the cost? Just starting high season, a small room on your own with aircon, you're probably going to pay four or five thousand baht a month. If you're in a hotel at a thousand baht a night, that's thirty thousand a month, so you're immediately saving. He wants an aircon room, a bit of luxury, not too fussed where it is because he can rent a motorcycle and he thinks, right. From trips before, he worked out that anywhere near the beach is going to cost you money, more money. So the further inland you go, the cheaper it gets. Um, so first thing, rent a motorcycle. Now, today in 2017, I'm pretty sure you have to present your passport, pay a deposit. They might even keep your passport, I'm not sure. But back then, a photocopy of your passport was suffice, and it was about three thousand, two and a half thousand baht a month for a motorcycle scooter, little one two five Honda or whatever it was. Um, and on the beach road there, there's loads of people renting bikes, and they're all the same price. So first morning, walks onto the opposite side from the beach along the very middle of the beach between Walking Street and Dolphin Roundabout halfway along so Central Road comes down to the beach somewhere around there between Soy Aids and Soy Post Office he finds there's a few bars there and a guy selling uh, renting bikes a Honda it was a Honda or a Yamaha Novo it was a Novo anyway um, Quite a new one. Guy was happy, two and a half thousand baht for a month. Um, and he, he was straight with the guy. He, the guy spoke quite good English. He said to him, he's got to find a room. Once he's got a room, he'll let the guy know where he's staying. Um, and the guy was fine. They gave him a plastic helmet, which he immediately threw under the seat. You lift the seat up and you can put a helmet underneath, to lock the seat. It was back then, you still had to wear your helmets, but nobody did. And there wasn't that many police stopping people for no helmet. Just maybe once a month, they'd suddenly have a, a, a spell. And if you did get caught then with a no helmet, it was 200 baht, and away you go. So I threw the helmet in. He's got his shorts on and his T-shirt. No safe motorcycle riding gear, taking his life into his own hands by riding around Patea on a scooter without safety gear. But in Patea, you just go from your room to a bar and you drink. You even ride when you're partially drunk. You seem to, your brain seems to disappear and you don't think. Um, 
so many accidents on motorcycles, scooters, where foreigners have come off and they've all down their leg, it's scraped. But it's too hot for jeans and long trousers, one would say. And that plastic helmet, would it save you? You probably would. Short sleeve shirts or vests. So if you come off, you're gonna rip yourself to shreds. Did Simon take insurance aid? Yes, he did. He got travel insurance for one year. Um, I think it was a multi-travel. So, it, But he, he managed it in such a way that, uh, multi-trip, I think it was. But he got insurance. In the way it worked, he, if he had a problem, he, it would cover him for that year. So he did have insurance. Why his move to have insurance? Anyway, he gets the bike, chucks the helmet under the seat. Right, he's going to ride away from the beach. Going to go over second road, further back, back to third road. Um, you've got the huge. I think it is actually called Sukhumvit. Is it Sukhumvit Road as well, like Bangkok, but whatever the main road is that goes from Bangkok down to Rayong and Ko Chang and things. So he's heading towards that big road, uh, away from the beach. And the best places, cheapest, are going to be the big sort of buildings with hundreds of rooms. Now, from his hedonistic days, he did visit a few rooms. <laughs> and he remembers, now I think it's called Vieux Tale, but it might, might be wrong. But it was a big block, I think it was two blocks maybe. So it was after second road, third road, somewhere up there at the back. Um, it was these huge blocks. Uh, so he went there. Found his way there. Quite easy to get there. Again, there seemed to be different offices looking after different rooms. And just by walking around the one building, there were some shops at the bottom and laundrettes and little supermarkets. And I'm sure there was a couple of blocks. But he walked around a couple of offices. They all had rooms available. Um, and on the, about the third office he got to, a woman had rooms, um, third or fourth floor, for 3,000 baht a month. And with aircon was 4,000 baht a month included it doesn't matter how much you use the aircon 4,000 baht a month water electric everything all in just one payment but they wanted three months rental and he said to the lady he was there for two months maybe more but wasn't 100% sure they were a bit reluctant um, but after scratching their head, they had empty rooms. They'd be daft not to take his money. And he got a room. 4,000 baht a month with aircon. Okay, not the prettiest room. It was dark and dingy. Um, no balcony. You, well, there was a sort of doors that opened, but with just a railing across. Uh, well, there, there was about a foot balcony. Um, wasn't much. You could just stand there on the balcony just about and possibly put some clothes out to hang to dry but not much room 35 square meter room double bed had a it wasn't furnished it did have the double bed had the shower room um, a TV stand a coffee table a couple of seats it, it, so it was furnished in a way but no TV no internet back then he wasn't fussed about internet anyway back then at all so there wasn't wasn't exciting it was pretty miserable place but anyway two months he thought it'll be fine and he just paid two months money they were fine with that eight thousand back there you go no other deposits nothing here's a key it's your room he's got a bike he's got a room within six hours the first day in Patea he sorted 
How good is that? It's that simple. You can just turn up into anywhere in Thailand. Quick wander around, quick talk to locals. You'll find the places away from the, further back from the tourist spots. You'll find rooms anywhere in Thailand. Price, 2017, that room that you just rented would probably be 6,000 baht a month, 7,000 maybe. If you wanted a proper, like a condo, nice rooms, you know, a really nice one, you're probably paying about 13,000 baht a month, up to 15 for a, a nice place. You might even get a, a bit of a small house for that. But that would be long term, you know, if you're signing for a year's lease, bit of a deposit, yeah. But for less than 20,000 baht a month, you can get a really nice place anywhere uh, in Thailand, even in Bangkok in 2017. But back then, 4,000 baht, okay, bit of a dingy room, but it's fine. And there he is, halfway through his first day, sorted. He's back in Patea. Where's that girlfriend, X? Catch you on the next one.